Okay, so um, I will share the whiteboard and we'll talk about some of the basics of this chapter, which I discussed with uh, Emma and other students in the last class. And yeah, I'll start now, the rest of them can join later. Okay, now the idea is that we are on the seventh chapter, that is sequences and series. So yes, I will just write that down quickly. Okay, now we will talk about sequences okay and the very first thing is here you will come across the word progression again again and again arithmetic progression geometric progression harmonic progression they are just you know it's just a word you can say geometric sequence automatic sequence is just a replacement of that right so you can also call a sequence a progression first thing i'll just talk about the three types okay now, the very first was uh, thematic, then it was geometric, and then we talked about harmonic. So we only have three types. The first one is arithmetic sequence, then we talked about geometric, and then the last type was harmonic so we don't study this in a levels like we do study this in physics but yeah that's very different so we had this discussion in last class as well okay now let's see how do we identify which sequence is an automatic sequence which one is geometric and which one is harmonic right okay now it's very easy let's say i have a sequence of this type one three five seven nine and so on. Or maybe let's say I have 4, 2, 0, minus 2, minus 4, and so on. What do we see? We see that this sequence has a fixed difference. This time it is positive 2, and this time it is negative 2. So this is the first thing. Automatic sequence is a sequence, uh, is a sequence which has fixed difference, okay? So I assume that automatic is clear. If I talk about the next one, that is geometric. So in this case, we have a fixed ratio. For example, let's say I have one, then I have three, I have nine, then um, I would have 27, and then so on, right? So what do we observe? We observe that from the preceding term, we are able to go to the next term by multiplying three, by multiplying three, okay? And it could be that we have, let's say 27, then we have nine, then we have three, then we have one, then we have one by three, one by nine. So what is happening this time? This time around, we again are multiplying a ratio that is one by three, right? Okay, so this is a geometric sequence. We have been talking about automatic and geometric in A levels as well. So I assume that this should be clear, right? We'll talk about the formulas that how to find the nth term, how to find sum and all that. Let's not get into that first. I would like to talk about harmonic sequence. And as I told you, they also call it harmonic progression. Okay, it's just a term. Don't get confused. Okay. So it is harmonic sequence or harmonic progression and what exactly it is. Okay, I'll read the definition. A sequence of numbers is called a harmonic sequence or a harmonic progression if the reciprocals of its terms are in automatic progression. Now this is interesting. So when you will come across the question, let's say you are sitting in the exam and you have a question hai, and you don't really know that the question is not automatic or geometric, ka bhi nahi hai, then which exactly sequence is that? Okay. So I'll write down a question of similar type. Let's say we have 1 by 4, we have 2 by 5, we have 1 and so on, okay? So you have been asked to identify the sequence. So first we'll think about automatic sequence. How do we do it? We'll find the difference, okay? So what is the difference? What do we need to add in one by four to get to two by five? Can anyone tell me? I would want you guys to participate as well, please. Yes, it's okay if you're telling me wrong, that's completely fine. 
Yes, Ahmed, can you tell me? Okay, that's okay. From one by four to two by five, I need to add 0 0.15. Yes. All right, uh, very good, Dua, okay. And then from two by five to one, what do I do? One minus two divided by five, and what do we get? Okay, this time around, I am getting 0 0.6. This means that this is not an automatic sequence because this difference is not fixed, okay? So we know that first choice has gone wrong. And by the way, this is a past paper question. I'm using this just so you guys are able to understand it, right? Okay, this is not an automatic sequence. We'll be quick. We'll see if it's a geometric sequence or not. So I will do two divided by five. That is two by five divided by one by four. So this time around, I need to multiply eight by five in order to get two by five. And let's see if I multiply eight by five with two by five, do I get the same thing? No, I don't, right? This means that this sequence is not geometric because we do not have a common ratio. What is the third type? The third type is harmonic. And what exactly was that? So the definition, I would read that again, it says, a sequence of numbers is harmonic if the reciprocals of its terms are in arithmetic progression. Okay, so we will find the reciprocals of this. I'll write it down as a new sequence. Four by one ka reciprocal is four. Two by five ka reciprocal is five by two. And one ka reciprocal is one, obviously, right? So what is happening this time around? We have four. We are going to 2.5 by subtracting 1.5. I have 2.5, I'm going to 1 by subtracting 1.5. So this red sequence is an arithmetic sequence because it has a fixed difference. Since this red sequence is basically coming by taking the reciprocals of the blue one, this means that the blue sequence is a harmonic sequence, right? So this is the idea about the harmonic sequence. And this is new. That is why I'm spending time on this. Although we'd had this discussion with old students, but I wanted to give you a quick recap. Okay. All right. So we are clear in the three hints. For automatic sequence, it would be a fixed difference. If it could be positive, it could be negative. We don't care. For geometric sequence, we would have a fixed ratio. It could be greater than three. It could be less than, uh, it could be greater than one. It could be less than one, right? We will see uh, how we talk about these things in future. And for harmonic sequence, any sequence whose reciprocals follow an automatic sequence is basically a harmonic sequence, right? So this sequence does not have anything on its own. We are talking about the reciprocals. So any confusion so far, please feel free to tell me. I'll wait for you guys, just process this and tell me in a minute or so that if you have understood this or not, okay? Yes, Mehdi, uh, Dua and Ahmed, please tell me if you have understood this or not. Yes, yes. I All right, very good. Now, um, in A-levels, uh, Mehdi, are you like in A2 or you are done with A-levels? No, ma'am, I'm second year. I'm doing FSC. FSC. Okay, so things would be easier for you. All right. Now, like uh, I would be giving, you know, re reference to A-levels as well because uh, you would be able to understand things because this is basically more or less the FSC syllabus. But yeah, in A-levels, we just uh, know formulas for finding the nth term and for finding the sum of first n terms or stuff like that, right? Here for NED preparation, we'll talk about a different thing and we call that automatic mean, geometric mean or harmonic mean. We just have formulas for that, don't worry. I had a detailed discussion in the last class, so I won't get into details, but yeah, we'll do as much we need for the questions, okay? For automatic sequence, let's just talk about the two main formulas first. The formula for finding the nth term, this is very important and these formulas should be on your fingertips because unlike A-levels, you won't be having any data booklet here, okay? A plus 
n minus 1 into d. So let's say you have a sequence and you have identified that it is an automatic sequence. Let's say 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. And you have been asked to find the 18th term. Now, obviously, you are not going to continue this way and go to the 18th term. I mean, it is easy for this case, but what if you were asked to find the 50th term? In that case, we use this formula. Okay, how do we use it? I'll, I'll tell you quickly. So A, 50, we need to find the 50th term equals A. What is this A? This A is the first term of the sequence, right? So A is the first term, it would be 1 plus n minus 1, that would be 50 minus 1, that is 49 multiplied by D. What is D? D is the fixed difference. So this time around the difference is of positive 2. So I'll do this and this would give me the answer, right? So we will do 1 plus 49 into 2 and the answer is going to be 99. Okay, so I just wanted to tell you quickly, uh, in case if you have forgotten this, this is how we find the nth term, right? Okay, I'll just rub the example and we'll talk about how to find the nth term in case of a geometric progression or a geometric sequence, okay? I'll be using the term progression just so you guys get comfortable with it. Okay, in case of a geometric progression, again, we have the formula for finding the nth term and that is a n equals a into r to the power n minus 1. I won't give you example this time around because we'll be doing so many questions after this. But yeah, a is the first term, r is the fixed common ratio, and n is the number of term which we are interested in finding. For example, if you have a sequence, I'll just write it down. So that's a 3, 1. 1 by 3, 1 by 9, and you have identified that the ratio this time around is 1 by 3. And this is a geometric sequence. You will use this formula to find, let's say, 10th term, 12th term, 30th term, whatever term you have been asked to, right? Okay. This is the idea about geometric sequence. And I assume that this would be clear because, you know, we are uh, comfortable with geometric and uh, thematic. What about harmonic? In case of harmonic uh, progression or harmonic sequence, we do not have a fixed formula for finding the nth term directly. Okay, I'll tell you. So if you have any, any sequence, uh, let's say if I talk about the one which I used previously, let's say 1 by 4, 2 by 5, and 1, right? Now, in order to find the nth term, we do not have any fixed formula. What we know is that the reciprocals follow the automatic progression. So this is 4, 5 by 2, 1, and so on. I will use this formula in order to find the, let's say, 30th term. In order to find the 30th term over here, and I will take the reciprocal of that, right? So that is the idea. So you can think about it this way that 1 over a plus n minus 1 into d, but I don't want to give you guys too many formulas. Just understand in case of a harmonic progression, if the reciprocal of the sequence follows automatic progression, we know that that sequence or that progression is harmonic, okay? And we can find the nth term for this sequence that is automatic. We are comfortable with that. This is the formula. Once we have that value, let's say that value turns out to be minus something. Let's say minus 5 by 2, okay? Now, I will take the reciprocal of this and write it down here, right? So that is the idea. You will get comfortable with it as uh, we will do more questions of this. Okay. Now, this is how we find the nth term for automatic, geometric, and harmonic. Any confusions, please feel free to tell me. I'll talk about the sum formula then after this. No, ma'am. Yes, Dua and Ahmed, are you comfortable with this? Yes, miss, it's all clear. All right, okay. 
well done i will clear this now and we'll talk about the second last formulas the last one would be about the new thing but yeah okay now i will talk about how to find the sum of first n terms okay now this is for first n terms all right now in case of automatic sequence we have two formulas basically okay and i'll tell you when to use which formula so i'll make two boxes yeah and i'll pick a nice color so let's go about a green one maybe okay now in order to find the sum of first n terms in case of arithmetic sequence what we do is sn equals n by 2 and then it says 2d plus n minus 1 into d right okay now this is the formula let's talk about what is n n is basically the number of terms which we need to add and find the sum then d is the fixed common difference it could be positive it could be negative and then n again is the number of terms which we need to add okay so this is the first formula it could be that in a question you have been told that it is like you have a sequence and you don't know the difference exactly but obviously you can find the difference but still let's say in the question they have given you the last term and the first term and they want you to find the sum of you know all those terms so this time around you can use this formula n by 2 a plus l where a is the first term and l is the last term and now i'll tell you okay basically uh, in case of a har uh, arithmetic sequence or arithmetic progression the question could be to find the nth term we have seen that okay it is um, a n equals and then we have the formula a plus n minus 1 into d it could be that the question tells you to find the sum of first 10 terms first uh, sum of all the terms stuff like that okay in that case you have two choices this is the first choice in this case you know the difference and you know the number of terms you need to add in the second choice it could be that the question is telling you the first term and the last term they do not tell you the difference okay so in that case we will use this formula and both formulas are going to give you the same answer right okay just try understanding this meanwhile i'll make the boxes for geometric okay so this was about the arithmetic sequence let's talk about geometric now in case of geometric we have two things right we have two scenarios okay so i told you earlier as well it could be that the fixed ratio is greater than 1 okay so let's talk about that over here that the fixed ratio r r is greater than 1 let's talk about an example as well only then you guys would be able to relate to it so let's say we have 1 we have 3 we have 9 27 and then we are going on continuously the next term is 81 and then we would have 243 and the next one is going to be 729 and so on okay and the question says to find the sum of let's say first few terms okay so it could be sum of first let's say 10 terms or stuff like that okay so this is simple in this case we can easily find the sum by doing this i'll write down the formula so sn is a multiplied by r to the power n minus 1 divided by r minus 1 right but what if the question says 
that find the sum of all the terms. Okay, now we know that in this sequence, since our R is greater than one, we would be going on continuously and we would by time n to infinity and obviously if I will add all these terms, I am going to get infinity, right? Now this is a thing. In case of R greater than zero, you cannot find some of some till infinity, right? Some till infinity means that you are going on continuously, 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 and you have to find the sum of all the terms. Now for cases like these, when your R is greater than one, your last term would be infinity. You cannot find some till infinity, okay? You can find some till infinity for such cases where you have R less than one. For example, we have, we start with 243, then we have 81, then we have 27, then we have nine, then we have three, then one, then one by three, then one by nine, then one by 27, one by 81. Now, what do you see that we are going on continuously and the number is getting smaller, smaller and even smaller. And there would be a time when the number would be approximately 0, 0.0000000, but it would be approximately zero, right? So we can find sum of all these terms, okay? And this is why we have the formula of sum till infinity. So in this case, we do it this way. First term divided by one minus R, okay? But we can only find the sum till infinity for cases where our R is less than one, okay? It could be one by three, one by four, one by eight, stuff like that. But for some cases, obviously we cannot find the sum of all the terms, right? So any confusions, please feel free to tell me if you did not understand this, please. Uh, so ma'am, uh, R should be less than one uh, if we have to find the total sum till infinity, uh, right? Yes, uh, let, let me just rewrite this. It should be, since R could be negative as well, right? So we only talk about yes. R mod, okay? Be specific about it. So even if it is minus two, it would still be greater than one because we talk about R mod, okay? I, I did not write it intentionally okay. because I just wanted you guys to get comfortable, but yeah, this is the idea. So in case of any fraction, in short, okay? If you have any positive or negative fraction, in that case, we can think about um, this scenario that obviously the last term would be approximately zero. So I can find the sum of all the terms, but in this case, when my last term is infinity, even if it is negative infinity, still I, I would not be able to find the sum, right? So this is the thing, okay? Okay. Yes, Tua and Ahmed, please tell me if you have understood this. Yes, miss, it's clear. Okay, very good. Now I will just rub the extra details. I'll write down the formulas and then we just have one last thing and then we'll talk about the past paper questions. All right, I will rub this as well. Okay, all right. Now, yeah, I, I am writing these formulas in separate boxes, but don't get confused. And yeah, okay. And yeah, so just remember that this formula, this formula is for finding the sum of first n terms for both the cases, right? Even if your um, R is a fraction or if it is greater than one, you can find the sum of first n terms. So this is a general formula for geometric sequences or geometric progression. But in case of sum till infinity, we only have this formula and we this is only valid for this scenario, okay? That is it. So this is the basic idea about it. Okay. Yep, and I will talk about the harmonic sequence now. Okay, again, I'm going to make boxes. Now, in case of a harmonic sequence, what do we know? 
how do we find the sum of n terms, right? They are not going to question you for this because we do not have a fixed formula, right? The only thing we know about a harmonic sequence is that if it is a sequence, which we are not able to understand if it's automatic or geometric, we'll take the reciprocals and then it turns out to be automatic sequence. Yes, we can find the nth term in that case, but we cannot find the sum of first n terms of a harmonic sequence, right? So yeah, we do not have any formula for that in the book, okay? So yes, this is the idea about the sum of first n terms in case of automatic and uh, geometric and then sum of all the terms when your ratio is less than one, right? So this is all about it. And now we will talk about the most important and the last thing that is mean. Automatic mean, geometric mean, and harmonic means. Okay, so I'll rub this, this should be clear. We'll do questions so things would get um, clear with them as well. And if I talk about the last thing, mean okay before that i would like to give you a quick idea about it so we i had this discussion uh, in previous class about means but since this time around we are new just think about automatic mean geometric mean harmonic mean as a formula okay the only thing which you need to understand this time around is that usually we have one mean right we just say like we would have if we have four five six so mean would be one only and how do we find it we just add up the values and we divide it by three and just we find the average and we say that is the mean, okay? This time around, the mean is a bit different, okay? The first thing is that if we have three terms in a sequence, let's say we have A, capital A, and B, okay? And let's say it is my automatic sequence. In that case, this A is going to be the mean of the other two terms that are A and B, okay? You, you will get this, don't worry. Okay, let's talk about geometric progression. Let's say I have a geometric progression and my first term is capital A, the second term, uh, first term is A, cap second term is capital A, and the third term is small b. Again, the capital G, or the middle term is known as the geometric mean of this term and this term, okay? And once again, let's say I have a harmonic sequence, again, this one, again, the middle term is going to be my mean. In short, the idea is that for three terms, we do understand that the central term could be mean, right? This makes sense, but let's say, if I talk about the arithmetic sequence first, and I have this pattern. So first term is small a, second one is a1, then we have a2, then we have a3, then we have an, we don't know how many capital A's we have, and then the last term is b. In this case, you should know that A1, A2, A3, and so on till AN, all these capital A's between the first term and the last term are called the arithmetic means between A and B. So A1, A2, A3, AN are arithmetic means between A and B, okay? Just relax, don't worry if you're not able to understand it, it's very easy. It's just, we just have a formula and we'll be using that, okay? So the formula is, I'll write down the formula here. We just have one formula and you're good to go, okay? Don't worry about it. So it says for finding the nth arithmetic mean, we do it this way. A n equals A plus N B divided by N plus one, okay? So this is the formula. For example, just relax. You have a question and you have been asked to find the first 
arithmetic mean between the first term and the last term? It, it, the question would say find the first arithmetic mean or A1. What you what are you going to do? You would be knowing A. A would be the first term. So it would be A plus N is 1. 1 into B divided by 1 plus 1. So this is the formula. Let's say the question say, it says find the fourth arithmetic mean. Okay. So you would know that obviously it is if they are saying arithmetic mean, this is an arithmetic sequence. This is the formula for finding out arithmetic mean. So you will write down A4 equals A plus 4 into B divided by 4 plus 1. And that would be A plus 4B divided by 5. This is the idea about arithmetic means, right? So the only reason why students find it a bit difficult is that they think about the simple mean. Yes, it is a simple mean if we have three terms, A, capital A and small uh, b, right? So in this case, you would be asked to find the first arithmetic mean because we only have one arithmetic mean. So this would be a1 equals a plus b divided by 2. So yes, this certainly is arithmetic mean, right? But this is for three terms. If you have more terms, the formula would change. And this is the idea. Last thing is, most of the times, students mix this n with the number of terms in the question okay please do not do that this n is this value right it is basically the mean which you have been asked to find it could be first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh seventeenth it totally depends on the question right so that is the idea about arithmetic means let's quickly talk about geometric means again i would not get into that much detail the concept is same. I am just going to write down the formula. So for finding the nth geometric mean, Gn is equal to A, that is the first term, then B divided by A to the power N over N plus 1. So if they want you to find the 13th geometric mean, just plug in 13, just plug in A, plug in B, and you are you have your answer, okay? So this is how we find the geometric mean. And in case of harmonic mean, we have a formula. So that says, in case of nth harmonic mean, nth harmonic mean, the idea is we do n plus one, a, b divided by n, a plus b, right? So we have three formulas for the three different types of means, okay? For automatic mean, we use this formula. For geometric mean, we use this one. And for harmonic mean, we use this formula. So any confusions, anything that you have not understood? Uh, uh, Ma'am, uh, can you tell me? Uh, where did this formula come from, this uh, uh, geometric mean formula? Okay, all right. So look at this. I will talk about it. Okay. Let's say you have two terms, okay? Uh, okay, so I got it. If we have two terms, for example, we have A, capital G, and then small b, okay? Let's say we have three terms in a sequence and this is the geometric sequence and you have been asked to find the geometric mean, okay? In this case, the formula is g equals under root a, b, and you have a plus minus sign here, okay? The thing is that we are not able to relate to it because yes, we were able to relate to the arithmetic thing because we have a fixed difference there, right? So things made more sense when I was writing down A plus B divided by two for three terms. In this case, we have a geometric sequence. We have a fixed ratio that is being changed with every term that is like we're multiplying it and then we're getting the next term. That is why you're not able to relate to it, right? So if you have three terms, the geometric mean would be this one, okay? This is for three terms. 
And this is your formula. So how do we get this? Let's just check this out. So in case of three terms, I would only have G1. So G1 is going to be A. A would be fixed. B divided by A. Then 1 by 2. So what is this? This is A. Then it is under root B. And then it is under root A. Right? So A has power 1 here. A has power 1 by 2 here. I know when I have two fixed bases and they're being divided, I can subtract the powers. And that would give me A to the power 1 by 2 as well. What is A to the power 1 by 2? A to the power 1 by 2 is again under root A and then under root B, and I can write it as under root AB, okay? And if we know that, we write down plus minus sign because we are not sure about the sign, right? So this is the idea. Yes, you would not be able to relate to this formula as well because this is not automatic, this is geometric. We are multiplying a ratio, and then we are finding out the mean, right? So this is the basic idea about it. This is the formula. You will be using this formula every time. We do not have the derivations in syllabus. If you are interested in derivations, I can send that to you after the class. But we do not have this uh, in the syllabus, right? The derivations. So, yes. Are you okay with it now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, very good. Now, I assume that things are clear. Let's just talk about the past paper questions quickly. I'll stop sharing this and I'll take out the questions. Just give me one minute. I'll take out the questions and then I'll get back to you. All right, now I am going to uh, share the questions with you. Sequences. Okay, so I have shared the questions with you. Just think you should be. This is what it says. Okay. All right, let's get started, okay? Let's talk about the first one. So it says, if A4 equals 4 for an automatic progression, then find the sum of first seven terms of the corresponding automatic series. Now, this time around, we do not know what is the common difference. We don't even know the last term. It is just telling us that the fourth term of an automatic progression is 4. And you need to find it in this case, we need to make an assumption first and then only then we can find the sum. OK, so for this, we think about it this way that, OK, it is um, it is an automatic progression. We would be having a common difference. So if the first one is one, then the second, the fourth one, a fixed difference Okay, from three to four by adding. OK, now we. The first term of the sequence is going to be 1 and we means that n is going to be 7. Now, I told you before uh, coming to this. So, in order to find this case of, let me just write down n divided plus is the formula. What is n? n is multiplied by what is d? d is 1, that would be 2 plus n is 7 and 1 is 6, right? So, this means that we have to do because we do multiplied by a times and seven into four is, so I'll repeat. This time around, the only thing we were told was that this is an automatic progression. That means the term is four, okay? So um, Ma'am, can we take uh, the sequence back in the negative numbers and then find a, uh, a common difference between them? Is it possible in that way? Okay. Now, yes, that since the difference could be negative as well, and it could be that we we had some terms and we were doing minus four and then we are calculating the answer, right? But in that case, obviously, 
let's just think about it. Let's say we had 77. Okay, so let's say fourth, the fourth term, then we have, and then we had, let's say six, and then we had seven, right? So that three, two, and one, okay? So these are the terms. What, what do you get when you add all these? Just check this and you, you would get your answer, okay? When you finished. add all these, Very the answer is again 28. Yes. It, it is 28 again, right? So yes, you're 100% correct. It could be that way as well, because obviously they have not told us that what exactly difference is. If the difference could be positive, it could be negative, right? So that was an excellent We are doing minus one, right? But still the sum would be 28. So yeah, it could be the other way around as well. You okay. are correct, okay? Any confusions, Ahmed and Wa? Emma, are you there? Please answer me. Yes. I'm okay, I, I, I told you to answer me. All right, so like you started scratching on the screen. Yeah, all right, so perfect. let's yeah. do it. Let's talk about the second question. Okay, all right, all right, okay, don't worry. It says, uh, which term of the sequence, this is a sequence try, Emma, well, but what about the other students, okay? So it says, which term of the sequence, this sequence is minus one, is it exactly? Is it geometric? Is it harmonic? Is it, um, uh, what do we have? A thematic seven by two by subtracting is 3.5 to two. Start the difference is fixed. If in any sequence, the difference is. The question is to find the N basically. Okay, which teenth, 15th, 18th, 17th, this TH is also telling us that we need to find the term, the Nth term, okay, progression. We have a fixed formula and we use that. It is a n n minus 1 into d, right? So d is the fixed difference is the first term. And what is a n? A n is 19 equals find n 5, okay? Can you guys be fine? I'll give you a minute. It would be a good practice for you as well. And I want you guys to type the answer in the chat box, okay? Thank you. Very good, excellent, Dua. Okay, so Dua got the right answer. What about you, uh, Mehdi and Emma? Please tell me. Um, ma'am, uh, how can we just calculate this uh, twenty-four or one point five? Because we won't be having calculators in the NET exam. Okay, so you were calculating all right. Okay, that is a very good question. Okay, let's do it together. Excellent question. Okay, so let's just simplify this and the other calculators with you. Okay, this is minus 19 
equals plus one multiplied. I'll take the five divided by n minus one. Yes. Are you okay with this? This is what we are going to have. Okay. Now my four divided by by two. Divided by two, and this is twenty n minus one in, and that is seventeenth, right? So this was an easy calculation, right, oh, okay. Mithi? Talk about the third question. So it says. For one by four, two by five, one. See, we have multiple formulas for finding n terms depending on the sequence. If it is automatic, we have a formula. If it's geometric, we have a formula. If it is harmonic, we have a formula that is not directly the formula, but now, yeah, we know how to play with it. Okay. So first thing is to identify: is it an automatic progression or an automatic sequence? So we have done this uh, example. Uh, when I was talking about the harmonic progression, the difference the reciprocal let's and one. So I do see that the reciprocals I'm subtracting. What am I subtracting? Time to get the next term can be calculated using arithmetic progression, right, guys? Yes. Okay. So it is a six would be n minus one into d. Can it would be my a? Is it one by four or is it four? Uh, four. Yes. Very good. Okay. Very good. It so four five into the common difference four minus one point five can be written as and fifteen by two. Okay. Now you can think about it. Display fifteen by two is basically seven five is uh, going to give you three minus three point five basically. Okay. Five. Okay. That is good. Now this is minus three point five, uh, and minus three point five is obviously not the answer. We will divided by minus three divided by minus will be two and two. Maybe did you understand this, all of you? Yes. Okay. Yes, miss. All right. Good. Talk about the new questions. Okay. So it says every term after the first is obtained multiple geometric sequence. The constant number is called. Now this is very very easy. The constant number is called. The common ratio, right? In geometric sequences, we are multiplying a common ratio to get the next term. So this was easy. Let's talk about the next one. It says geometric mean between two. Okay. Now for this one, either you can think about the small formula which I wrote for proving it to Mehdi, the under root uh, AB formula. But no, we'll talk about the nth formula just so we are comfortable with how to think mean between two numbers 4 and minus 80 find the first geometric mean the second geometric mean third geometric mean so this should be assumed that we are talking about three terms here this is 4 one is minus 81 i'll write down the formula for gn divided by a to the power n is 1 so g1 is going to be and minus 81 1 by 2 okay Just stop here. There's no point. It is a negative number. We know that by two or something of that type, right? So we will just choose the the geometrics. We cannot have a negative number in the under root, right? So that is why the answer is none in this case. So are you guys okay with it? What will be the n? One. N would be one, okay. So in this, this is what I was telling you that here the fourth one stuff like that, right? Although in this case the answer is done, we won't be able to find any value. But for understanding it, for such four geometric mean and minus eighty one, so this okay. is going to be G one. And Emma, do you remember we proved all these um, yes. in like in the previous class for we were getting the same answers, right? So yeah, that is the idea. Okay. I assume that this is clear. If not, then please feel free to tell me that you did not understand this. I'll wait for a few seconds, and then I'll talk about the next question. Okay, so I assume that it is clear. Let's talk about the next one. Right now, this is the next question. This is easy. I want you guys to try it. Just so you question it says the nth term of an earth mass. And okay, so we can easily find this. Just do your workings and tell me the value. Okay.
is it b uh b hmm. hmm okay let's see i want other students to try as well so then i'll tell you what is the answer okay okay i'll just type next okay <laughs> all right Um, uh, I guess it's uh, B. B. Okay, and what about you, Dua? Are you done? Yes, yes, I'm done. Okay, and what are you getting as the answer? Um, miss, my answer is not in the. I think I've calculated it wrong. So okay, I'm okay, okay. Okay, okay. It's okay. It's okay. Let's do it together. Okay. The answer is B. Very good and very good. Dua, that you tried. Excellent. Okay. Let's do it together. So it says the nth term of an arithmetic for finding the nth term in case of an arithmetic progression. Okay. What is arithmetic progression? It is an arithmetic sequence. We have a formula, and through is going to be a n n minus one into d. Okay. All these options we have n, but and a is one and d is seven plus thirteen n. And minus plus thirteen n. This is how we calculate it again? Actually, n s. So we had to find it for the general term. Okay. The only thing we had was the first term and then the common getting. So, what did you understand it now? Yes, I took. I mistook the minus seven as only seven. That's why I was getting oh, a wrong answer. All right, all right, all right. That's okay. All right. But yeah, let's look at how clever they are. Like this one, and then you would have gotten this like as the constant term. But be careful with the sign. Okay. All right. That's okay. Obviously, um, let's talk about the next term. Okay, question between this number and this number. Again, I told you the formula for nth harmonic mean. Again, the question is not telling you which harmonic mean they want us to find. Is it the first one, second one, third one, fourth one? They have not given any information about that. So, as I told you earlier as well, we are going to assume that they are talking about formula for general one out calculator. So, this is learn all these formulas. Into a b i. Fact that the question says harmonic mean between this term and this term means that one. So that would be the first harmonic mean. Okay. So I will take n as one. So let's just write is n plus one. One plus one. A is seven. And then we have minus. Uh, and then we have to multiply it. Can we first solve it? Then we can try. Yeah, I'm solving it with. I to talk about the thing as well. Okay. I. Okay. Twenty-seven. Okay, so can I uh, three? That would be nine. So I can write it as three into nine. Yeah. Okay. You will know that why I'm doing this. It's basically part of basic math since we will be doing this question without twenty-seven. Yes. Okay. Now I divide by under root three, and then we had under root three. Okay. I hope things are making sense to you. The only for twenty-seven is term, and you would understand shortly why I want these two terms to be same. Okay, because I need to use an harmonic mean between one because n is under root. Um, I just proved so that three and three under root three divided by three under root three. And root three. Okay. So far, I'll give you a quick recap. The question was to find the harmonic between harmonic mean between two terms. So since they did not talk about first harmonic mean, second one, third one, I should know this that it it is the first harmonic mean. If it is first harmonic mean, n is going to be one. So u of a with under root twenty seven as three under root three. Later, I can cancel this term and this term because they are same, and this is why I wanted to use under root twenty seven. Other and the use being multiplied to a minus b. Entities are going to help you with these calculations, right? A square minus b square. This is an identity on three square. Square that is by three, three under root by six. Space two multiplied by nine minus twenty seven divided three times is three. So it um, six um, three times is eight means that the answer is a. Okay, okay. This question was very easy. We just had to find the harmonic mean between two terms. Since they did not mention which harmonic mean it is exactly, so we will assume that this is the first harmonic mean. If it is the first harmonic mean, n is going to be one later. 
and yeah we basically have n into a plus b this is the formula i'll write it again the this is the formula we have n here with a but since n is one so the, the answer turned out to be fine right but i should have written this only trick was that this number and this number they are seen and only then i can calculate it without the calculator right otherwise it could have been very difficult for me so yeah i've just plugged in plugged in the values use uh, six so i want you guys to be honest with yourselves and tell me if you did not understand this question very honestly Uh, is this in harmonic progression or is it in arithmetic progression? The first two terms in the question. Yes, they are in harmonic progression. Okay, they're in harmonic progression. Because they are talking about the first two terms directly. They're talking about the harmonic mean between these two terms. So they are in harmonic progression. Yes, any idea? Uh, are you okay with this, Tua and Mehdi? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I think we should go with the easier formula uh, that is h is equal to 2ab over a plus b. And we will get easier in an easier way. Uh, no, which formula so, do you want to use? 2ab over a plus b. Yeah, exactly. But that would work for this case only, right? If the question says, if the question says to find the second harmonic mean, so I don't want to give you guys too many formulas, right? You can just simplify the formula initially that if you have, uh, if you have, let's say, first harmonic means you can just write divided by A plus B. This is going to be the formula, yes. okay? Yes. Okay. Let's talk about the next question. So this time around it is this one. Okay. So it says A27 of 7, 23 by 2, 32 by 2 is what? We need to find the 27th term. Okay. So let's see if we are able to or not. My first question, automatic sequence, geometric sequence, what sequence is it, is it exactly? Now, obviously, if you will try looking at this way, we don't understand what else. Write it down this way, 7 by 23 by 2, 5. And now think about it, okay? Find the difference. 11 is from 11. Pause is an automatic progression. So I want you guys to pay more attention. We just have some few minutes left. Please pay attention. This is about your future. Do your calculations and tell me what would be the 27 term of the sequence, okay? Let's practice with me now. Very good, Dua. Dua has uh, done it correctly. Uh, Emmet, what is your answer? And what about you, Mehdi? Are you guys done? Um, uh, yes, uh, it's uh, 124, I guess. Very well done. Excellent. Okay, it is 124. I will not waste time in doing this. This was an easy question. You just need to use 
the n formula you have the difference you have the first term and you can just find it easily by plugging in n as 27 okay all right says for a plus a r plus a r square now this is a geometric sequence that is being added so we call these series okay the only difference in a sequence of the sequence we call it we, we call those series of uh, these terms and they are basically finding the sum till infinity because they have infinity here so how do we do it i wrote the formula it is a divided by one minus r so it is going to be this right this should be clear okay so since we are finding the sum till infinity yes the condition should be that r is less than one and we can only calculate s infinity for that case right so if they are able to calculate something this means that's just direct formula let's talk about sum of all the terms again think about it first thing is that is sum of all the d this does not mean that the last term is infinity okay this means that they are again it's very obvious that if the first one term is one we say this means that this zero 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 something right so this should be can ask to find s infinity so without wasting time i will do one divided by one minus r what is r in this case right six. very well done excellent mehdi please do the mathematics and tell me the answers like mentally uh, not using your calculators obviously so would be say one so this and it is a right you think that you have not understood no my question okay. is uh, mm. what is r for oh, that r, we are multiplying a number yeah i'll tell you i'll tell you wait a second we know that what is the previous term to get the next one okay so if one is the first term that i am similarly if i talk about the second right. and third term good so that would be 25 by 36 right, right. okay good let's talk about another question now so, so, so yeah, ratio, no, that, for, yeah, yeah yeah r is the ratio okay 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 good now what do we have again this is series where we are adding x plus x square plus out of a geometric progression where r is where r is what r is x, x right very good and this time around this n is n terms only so the formula, formula. is we'll a divided by 1 minus to 1 minus divided by 1 minus x okay now the thing is that in all these options i do not have 1 minus x anywhere in the denominator right this means that it would be a bit different so yeah what do you guys think i am going to take minus or maybe you can think x x so this is how we can understand this so the answer is going to be so this step the second last step basically you okay with this yes very good so uh, let's me see if you, yeah that is it okay so yeah that is it we have we are done with these questions anything that you have not understood in these questions or in the discussion part okay so i'll stop the recording first and then you can ask me if you have any questions